everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I've been really wanting to put together a nice budget PC build over the last couple of years, but I found it notoriously difficult. What I've struggled with has been price and availability, and I'm sure everyone is aware that not that long ago, video cards and other components were very hard to come by and overly expensive. And while I could have just shelled out a bunch of cash on a premium PC build at points over the last couple of years, I'm really happy that I held out until now. Now is really an ideal time to put together a build in my opinion. We've got a lot more stock available and on top of things like Black Friday or end of year sales, another thing that you have in your favor is a bunch of upcoming product releases. Now that means more retailers are offering current stock at a big discount, which allows you to put together a really solid machine at a fraction of what it would have costed you half a year ago. Some of you may already know, but most of my workflow is done on a Mac. I wanted a performant PC build to fill in the gaps where my M2 MacBook struggles. And that means being versatile enough to run games with decent performance, doing some creative video work if need be, and just an overall solid machine that can handle pretty resource heavy tasks all with new parts while staying under a thousand dollars. That would have been a daunting task a few months ago, but it is totally doable now. And while I have had to make some sacrifices, I've been able to minimize them as much as possible and come out with something that is a beast at this price point. In order to get the best performance at the lowest cost, I chose to do a full on AMD build. This build runs an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPU. I picked up for $160, which is normally about double that. It's got more than enough power with six cores and 12 threads, a high core frequency, and a large cache for gaming. That CPU sits on an Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard. This was one of the only things that wasn't on sale hovering around $200, but I had specific requirements around the motherboard. I wanted something with onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and I chose this board in particular because it was one of the most affordable options that was an X570 chipset. I wanted the X570 specifically because it does support PCIe 4, or models below it like the B550 are only PCIe 3. The difference between version 3 and 4 won't be a huge one with your GPU, but it can be with SSD speeds, especially in my case as I'm running a 1TB Western Digital SN770. Some of you may recognize that drive if you've watched some of my other videos as I do have one of those already in an SSD enclosure that I use on my Mac. I got this drive on sale for under $100, and with read speeds capable of over 5,000 megabytes per second, it is one of the best out there at this price point. I did have to sacrifice a few minor things with the motherboard. USB speeds are limited to 10 gigabits per second, and this does only have Wi-Fi 5, which I'm all right with. The one thing that I wish was a little bit different is the provided Wi-Fi antenna. With boards that I've bought in the past, the Wi-Fi antenna often would have a magnetic base, so it would just clip on to your case or to the back of your desk. Now, this isn't the case here, but that's pretty minor. It does support a bunch of other features on here that I won't use for this build, at least not yet, like the addressable RGB headers or a sync and all that good stuff, but nice to have nonetheless. We've got DDR4 RAM, which I don't think should come as a huge surprise, and I've decided to go with 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance 3600 megahertz memory, which is technically quite a bit slower than what's in my M2, but in most instances, isn't all that noticeable. Uh, for most things, 16 gigs will be fine, but for certain use cases like 3D work, some content creation, and any kind of virtualization, 32 is ideal. And this is one of those things where this machine can offer a little bit more that way than my Mac. And on top of that, probably the biggest thing in here that sets this apart from my Mac is the graphics card. This is a Gigabyte Eagle RX 6600. I probably could have bought something used that was a little bit better performance wise, but this was an awesome deal at only $220. This is a far cry from a few months ago where this probably would have cost me double that. And I do like that this has a triple fan design where cards at this price point usually only have two. So you do get a reasonable amount of airflow here. And speaking to airflow, I've ditched the stock CPU cooler and put on a Deepcool AK400 air cooler. I found one of these on sale for just over $20, which was about half price, and it's perfect for a budget build. The stock cooler can run a little bit warm, so this was a great reasonably priced upgrade. It was a little bit of a pain in the ass to get the provided brackets properly installed on the motherboard when mounting it. 
but once they're on, it's super easy to attach the cooler. The color was somewhat of a factor there as well. This does come in white, which matches my case, the Deepcool CK500. I did want as much white as possible to match the rest of my setup. I know with budget builds, you can't always worry about aesthetics, but it was nice to have a few options available. And while this case was a tad bigger than I wanted to go, there were just too many great things about it to ignore. It has a tempered glass side panel, great cable management, and really good airflow. There's two fans pre-installed, one at the front and one at the back, but I had two 120 millimeter fans kicking around that I cleaned up and installed in the front. You could potentially put more in the top if you wanted. And having all these options with good cable management isn't super common in cases this cheap. And the CK500 only set me back about 60 bucks down from the regular price of just under $100. Last but not least, this build is powered by a Gigabyte P650G 650 watt power supply that cost me about 50 bucks. That has more than enough power to run this machine. The CPU and GPU for a desktop are relatively low power, so there's plenty left over for future upgrades if I decide to switch any of this up down the road. With everything put together and running, this setup runs all the apps that I've tried with it like butter. Uh, with Blender, I can run considerably faster renders than on my M2 Mac, and while I still use my Mac for editing these videos in Final Cut Pro, if I ever wanted to use DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, this would be more than capable. The only thing that I'll say in relation to video editing is lots of processing with H.264 or H.265 video is going to be limited to the encoder, which I think works much better on Mac, regardless of what CPU or GPU that you're running. But in the limited testing that I've done, editing footage or playing around in GPU heavy apps like After Effects, there have been no slowdowns or drawbacks. This PC is reasonably quiet and under heavy load, CPU temps hover around 52 degrees Celsius, whether that be in demanding apps or while gaming, which has been fantastic for me. Obviously, Macs are not what you wanna be using if you want to do any kind of gaming unless you really like Apple Arcade or something, but anything else, even if you're a casual gamer, PC is really where you wanna be. And it's one of the things that I've missed most about not having a PC. So I've been sitting here for a while, trying out a whole bunch of different configurations with a whack of different games and titles. And what I found is with some titles like Madden and Forza, it will support full 4K at medium to high settings at the most, but you're still gonna get around 60 frames per second. Uh, if you move to titles like Halo or Battlefield, it's really gonna struggle at 4K, so you will have to drop down to 1440p. But even there, you're looking at medium to high settings. Uh, if you wanna go on ultra settings, you can do that at 1080p, no problem. Uh, you can hit ultra sometimes on 1440p, but all in all, great for a budget build like this. Temperatures are stable under heavy load on the GPU at around 60 to 70 degrees. And there's definitely some wiggle room here if you want to overclock either the GPU or CPU. I think the GPUs are rated for 110 degrees or so, and the CPU is good up to around 95. Just looking at benchmarks, this PC does well above average in most categories, more than I could have hoped for. And granted, while it's still pretty fresh and new, it's been super fast and I haven't noticed any bottlenecks. I've ran a slight overclock on the GPU with no issues, but even leaving things as they are, if you're not looking for a full seamless 4K experience when it comes to gaming, this thing will run most games at 1440p and 1080p without any problems at all. Playing online multiplayer games, the network connection has been great as well, with about the same speeds as on my other Wi-Fi 6 enabled devices. Even with this only being Wi-Fi 5, maybe a little bit slower on the upload speed, but the ping is good. There's no network drops and all my Bluetooth devices, whether they've been a keyboard, mouse, or headphones have all had stable connections with no hangups. And with all that said, there isn't anything I'd change right now about this build. It's really covering all my bases and exactly what I was looking for, especially at such a low cost. When it comes down to it, the total cost of this was about $910 total, which is a great deal. This probably would have cost me over 1200 bucks or more not that long ago. Uh, all the parts in here are brand new, so you don't have to worry about anything crapping out and not being covered by warranty. And something that's a huge bonus, it has great airflow and it looks fantastic, which is not something that can be said for many budget builds. I'll try and leave links in the description to everything that I've mentioned in this video, but if there's anything that you have questions about here or if you have any budget preferences or things that you would have done differently that you'd like to share, 
drop a comment down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button if you want to see more tech related content or if you want to go through the experience of switching back and forth between PC and Mac keyboard layouts with me, constantly getting frustrated by mixing up the Windows command and alt keys and then just giving up on technology and moving into a secluded forest away from civilization, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.